Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're here now. We're here now. The big day is next, well, next week, first part of the week there, on the 8th, which is a Tuesday. We'll, we'll basically, everybody be hitting to the polls. If you, haven't mail, if you haven't mailed them in, that's too late. You have to actually take your ballots. You have to take your ballots to the various polling places, okay? All right. The bottom line, what we're going to do today is that we're going to try to do a, <laughs> we're going to try to give you a little, sort of a, like a little recap of, uh, of what we feel um, might be some of the areas that you might be interested in. And I think the guests that I have uh, here today, I've got three different segments of the show that I think that you, you'll find it to be very effective. First off, I'm going to start off with Oregon, and that is because uh, that's a very important state because we all live here. And I thought I'd pick a candidate that was running for statewide office uh, that uh, would, would reflect maybe some of the areas that we might be considering. I'm talking about Mark Callahan. Mark is here with us today. Uh, he's to, to my right, to your left on the camera, on, on, the, on your two. But Mark's been around. I mean, he's, he's a very dedicated, very enthusiastic person. I mean, he knocks on doors. I mean, this guy, I mean, he is really, really committed. And he knows that it's a tough, tough race to run because he's running against our, our, uh, our, our so-called person who's already sitting in that seat, and that's Ron Wyden. Yep. Ron Wyden is a, is, a, is a sitting senator from Oregon, one of two, one of two senators. And uh, so anyway, I thought it'd be very interesting to have Mark here. He happens to be a Republican. But uh, sometimes he's a liberal Republican, sometimes he's conservative. He's just a good Oregonian trying to deal with the issues of this state, and that's why I have him here. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Okay. Appreciate it. Fine, fine. I've got Jim along with, uh, with me, and Jim's going to sit down here, and, and we're going to ask him, uh, Mark, a couple of, couple of things, a couple of areas that he might feel uh, that would resonate with you because it, it, we're talking about issues. We're not talking about personal issues or whatever. But from that point on, Jim, well, then Jim and I will just kind of either add to that, or if not that, ask him a question or two. Is that right. fair, Jim? Sure. And you've seen Jim before, Jim Lewenberger. Okay. All right. Mark, let's just get right down to the to, to the campaign itself. Uh, the major issues, I mean, with respect from a national, let's go national first on the national perspective. Uh, you know, the, the, the battle between, for president of these United States, it's a heavy one. Mm -hmm. We've got four, four we've got four candidates, mm -hmm. two of which wasn't in the debates. Mm -hmm. That was the Green Party and the, and the, and the Libertarian Party, right? We've got, naturally, we've got uh, the businessman, Donald Trump, and we've got uh, the, the, the sitting uh, Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Okay, fine. And so one of the issues, I'm mean, going to just throw right on the table, uh, was the whole issue about the the hacking, if you will, of the of the various emails, or just hacking, mm -hmm. and it was pointed out that in the early stages that it was it was actually the, the it was the uh, the Soviet Union or, or the Chinese or whatever. But there's no there's nothing to say that mm -hmm. there's no facts or whatever. But but the hacking, as I saw it all along the first day, is that they might have hacked the information, but no one the no, the, the, the emails that were hacked, no one who basically the person who put them out put them out there never denied the fact that it wasn't fact. Mm -hmm. And that was never laid out from the media standpoint. Fair? Fair, yeah. You want to, sh want to share some thoughts about that, please? Well, I'm an IT guy by trade myself. Oh, are you? So okay. I, I've been doing computer work uh, for the past 16 years. I market myself on the campaign trail as a troubleshooter and problem solver. Mm -hmm. So I know I know a little bit about technology. Thank you. D just a tad. But okay. uh, I, I mean, I she's, she's making excuses, honestly. I mean, Hillary is making excuses. I know about how email can be hacked. I know I don't hack email myself. Mm -hmm. But I, I know about email. I built email servers before myself for organizations that I worked for in the past. And she's outright lying. Mm -hmm. I mean, she shouldn't, re she shouldn't have an email server in her basement in the first place. That's totally unsecure and totally non-transparent. And so she's outright lying. She's trying to blame other people. That's what, that's what she does. She blames other people for her unaccountability. She needs to start being accountability for her own illegal actions. Honestly, I think she belongs in prison versus the... Uh, the Oval Office. I, the, I know the other side is sending out mass text messages now. Now the other side. Uh, you're talking about White. Now you, are you saying that well, White no, supports they, her? 
the the Hillary supporters. The Hillary, the Hillary well, supporters are sending she, out. She is a Democrat, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, she, I'm just asking the question. Well, I mean, it, it, she she basically committed crimes, okay. and whether you're a Democrat or Republican, if you commit pri- crimes, you need to be accountable for those actions. I'm personally out. Run, I'm running my own race. I'm running. Yeah. I'm concentrating on my own race. Mm-hmm. Been going all over Oregon. Mm-hmm. I'm out to represent all Oregonians, Democrat, Republican, Green, working family, mm-hmm. Libertarian, Independent, whatever. But you have an opponent. I do have a an sitting opponent. sitting senator. A sitting His senator. His name is Ron yeah. White. Ron White. What, what do you think his position is on this issue? Well, should, um, she, should she go to jail? I mean, what, what does he say? Have you, he endorsed her. He endorsed he her. He endorsed Hillary Clinton early on. Okay. And that actually really frustrated the Bernie supporters in the state because Bernie won Oregon. And with a sitting senator that endorsed an unindicted criminal, in my opinion, I think it was last December or last January, even prior to the to the May primary, and he's just not in touch with the state because, as I said, Bernie won Oregon, mm-hmm. and so if he endorsed Hillary Clinton in December and January, and Bernie won Oregon, he's not in touch with his own boroughs that he's supposed to be representing, mm-hmm. let alone the Republicans. He's supposed to be representing all Oregonians, like I'm out to do. Mm-hmm. He's not representing all Oregonians. He's been going hardcore for Hillary Clinton, and that's not only kind of frustrated the Bernie supporters, but it's frustrated the Republicans as well, because we're not being represented either. So he's going so far left, he does not represent Oregon wow. at all. Wow. He's been infected by that bubble back there in Washington, D.C. He's been back there for 35 years Mm -hmm. since I was four years old. And so we need some fresh blood. We need some fresh ideas back there. And Ron Wyden just isn't doing it anymore. What about the term limits then? I mean, you said 30 years. I mean, how do you, how do you stand on that issue? Well, Are you I, for it or not? I'm, I'm for term limits, honestly. Okay. I, I figure I go I get in there, I go one, two terms, and then that's it. I'm coming home. I, I will term limit myself. Because basically our country was not founded by and, and meant to be run by career politicians. You had people working in their community, running their businesses, running their lives. Other people in their community would come to them and say, it's your turn to serve. They would go up there for two to four to six years, serve their time, and then they would come back home to their business. Ron Wyden has nothing to come home to mm-hmm. because he lives in New York with his wife that has a New York voter registration. His kids go to New York schools. His wife runs a uh, the Strand bookstore out there in New York. They're multimillionaires. Mm-hmm. I tell you, I'm living here in East Portland myself over there, about 162nd in Halsey. Two-bedroom apartment, about $1,000 a month. I don't want to get rich while I'm in office. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm happy being able to raise my kids. I'm happy being able to take them with me on the campaign trail, teach them about honor and integrity and character. That's what I'm happy. I want to represent all Oregonians. I don't want to get infected by the bubble back there. That's why I believe in term limits. Mm-hmm. You know, another. let's go back to that server piece. And then Jim and I, we kind of talked a little bit about that piece. The latest on that old piece with the FBI, mm-hmm. you want to share that? You got you any background on well, that? Well, I, I heard Educators. I heard they reopened the, uh, the investigation. And then uh, here recently a letter was sent to Congress that says, oh, no, there's no... There's nothing to investigate. You know, it's like they keep on going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And it's like they're, there's, I, I'm a Star Wars fan myself. Mm-hmm. I like Star Trek too, but I'm a Star Wars fan. And remember that one part in Star Wars <laughs> where it says, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Move along. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. that's, that's literally what yeah. they're doing here. Yeah, it's yeah. saying, oh, these aren't the droids you're looking mm-hmm. for. Move mm-hmm. along. Mm-hmm. And they got to make up their mind here mm-hmm. because it's corruption. Mm-hmm. It's absolute corruption. I mean, you, you figure my opponent has been on the Senate Finance Committee for years. He's set, if he wins this thing, which he's not going to, to take it over. And the Senate Finance Committee is intricately involved in setting our tax code. Mm-hmm. Well, our tax code is 74,000 pages plus of carve-outs and cronyism and special deals that have basically shafted Americans over the past 30 years. I propose we throw it all out and we actually implement a flat tax in, in, its, in its place, something that will unlock our revenue so we can pay for things like accessible and affordable health care. We can pay for things like education for our kids in our schools. What does a flat tax mean as opposed to what we're doing today? It simplifies the whole thing. Okay. It simplifies the whole thing. I, I'm proposing a 16% flat tax for businesses, mm-hmm. a 10% flat tax for citizens, free exports, and 16% on imports. That's what I'm proposing. And I want to be able to do my taxes on a postcard, basically. And right now, these taxes are just so complex because you have all these carve-outs and cronyism and all these lobbyists over the years that have 
input it into our tax code to get these special deals. I tell you, I haven't taken any money from lobbyists. I don't have the millions of dollars that my opponent has that he's been spending on these cheesy and pathetic commercials on television that everyone's getting sick of. I don't. I, I haven't even run one TV commercial myself because I'm getting my support and my my donations from the grassroots at about twenty to fifty dollars per per yeah, donation. That's yeah. it. I'm not. I don't have the the millions of dollars he has, and I'm I'm happy because I'm re- out there representing all Oregonians. Mm-hmm. What, what's what's more indicative of corruption? The the emails, uh, the violation of the Espionage Act, which is the email server, or the pay for play where she's selling her uh, influence as Secretary of State in order to get huge speaking fees for her husband and I, for herself. I'd say, I'd say both of them. Both of them. I mean, it's, it's not what our country's about. Our country's about liberty. Our country's about freedom. Our country's about representing we the people. And when you have a person like Hillary Clinton or you have a person like Ron Wyden in there that are basically cutting themselves special deals. I'll give you another example. My opponent basically came out, oh, he's going to fight the pharmaceutical companies, blah, 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 whatever. He's not fighting the pharmaceutical companies. You go to OpenSecrets.org, you look up his campaign donations, which I highly encourage people to go to OpenSecrets.org because it's a wealth of information. You look at, you type in Ron Wyden, you look at his campaign donations, he's, you see how he's funded by about 25 to 30 wow. pharmaceutical wow. companies that he's supposedly going to fight. Well, he's not going to fight him. He has no intention of fighting because they fund his campaign. Wow. Well, now, Hillary Clinton was broke a few years back, according to her own statement. She's, she's a multimillionaire now. Ron, you just said Ron Wyden is a millionaire now. Was he, was he a millionaire before he became a senator? I don't think he was, but I mean, he got well, rich in office. Get, how do you get rich in office and, and be a, and be an honest person? It's it's these special de- deals. It's these lobbies. It's the corruption. Just get elected. Yeah, it's the corruption. <laughs> you know, I I'm fighting the corruption by partially. I'm fighting the corruption by running against Ron Wyden to begin with. And so you're but, a poor man today, or middle class. So middle class, is your promise yeah. that you will not be a millionaire when you, you when you leave good, office? Good. I, I don't. That's not why I'm going in there. I'm go, I'm not going in there for fame, fortune, or glory. Okay. I I know that the current salary for U.S. senators and House of Representatives is 174 thousand a year. I'm not going in there to get rich. I'm going in there to represent all Oregonians because that's my job. That's what I want to set the example for my kids for. One of the things I want to throw out real quick, because we only have about three or four minutes, is that, you know, often the, uh, all due respect, there's always this concern and cry about jobs. Mm -hmm. There's always this this concern about the black community Mm -hmm. and the monies that we have been spending and pouring in here in the the city of Portland and Multnomah County, Mm -hmm. trying to, quote, get them working and this, this, that, and the other and whatever. But at the end of the day, there's no jobs. Exactly. There's no jobs. Well, I mean, I I can tell you my opponent wants to ship our jobs overseas. Does it? Uh, Yeah, there's something called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay. I'm against the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's basically napped on steroids. There are other parties that are against the Trans-Pacific Partnership that actually share my opinion. Working families are against it. Greens are against it. Progressives are against it. Libertarians are against it. Independents are against it. The only one that is for the Trans-Pacific Partnership is Ron White. What about the President of the United States? Doesn't he support it? Yeah, he supports it too. (laughs) I mean, Ron White actually put forward the fast track authority, I tell you, that actually really frustrated the unions. And he was actually uninvited from the annual Labor Day Park union rally at, at Oaks Park. And I was the only Republican that was allowed to speak at that same rally. Wow. And I spoke against the TPP because the TPP, wow. as I said, it's going to ship our jobs overseas. It's naft on steroids. We're gonna, if it passes, we're going to hear that giant sucking sound that that guy with the big ears back in the 90s told us about. Only it's going to be going overseas as opposed to south of the border. Like what about, what did. about Hillary Clinton? It, it, at one point in time, she was supporting it, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, we've been talking about uh, employment. What, what is the effect of the, uh, raising the minimum wage on unemployment? What, what what do you mean by that? Well, if if we there's there's an effort uh, to raise not only state uh, minimum wage but also federal minimum wage, and what will be the effect on um, employment or unemployment if, if that happens? Well, I'm I'm a supply and demand guy myself. Mm-hmm. I believe in the free market, and um, I, I think that the free market should dictate in terms of wages. We don't need jobs going away. We I mean, businesses are just going to pass on that extra cost. Mm-hmm of what they have to pay out um, in wages to the consumer. Well, it, that means prices are going to go up. Mm-hmm. That means it's going to be more expensive to live. So I, I, I'm, I'd have to study up on that issue a little bit more myself mm-hmm. but before I, I can make a call on it. But as I said, just in general, though, I'm a free market guy, 
and I think it should I think wages should be based upon supply and demand and how much skills a person has you know I mean a minimum wage job was never meant to be a career position I can tell you one thing this major 97 if it goes through it's going to raise prices it's going to cause all a bunch of jobs to go out of the state because it's going to raise prices on everything I'm against major 97 myself well, do you but do you feel that they are paying their fair fair share of rent in terms just of... Just ask a question. I'm just asking you a question. Who, who paying As far that? as the, the private sector. I mean, the, the, the people who are, who are against this 97, are they paying their fair share? Well, it's... What's the thought? I mean, I, I hate to put that deal in, but that's the bottom line. Pay, like the corporations? Of, is that what you're talking about? Are they talking paying about? their fair share? Well, that's, that's, that's how it. the yes side is actually marketing it, but okay. I can tell you that it's going to affect small businesses. Okay. Oh, no, no, and it's going to affect them small, small businesses uh, negatively. I'll give you an example. We can, we, we, we're done. We, we're about done now. Okay. But All anyway, right. uh, you've done a good job. Any last, real, real quick, last comment to the voting public? Well, um, they can go to my website. I encourage people to get out there and vote by November 8th at 8 o'clock p.m. I have a victory party at the Monarch Hotel at 7 p.m. Oh, Everyone's okay. invited. Okay. Uh, we got hors d'oeuvres. We got uh, bacon-wrapped uh, sausages. We got barbecue meatballs. Okay. And I'd be happy to, it's going to be a great party. And okay. uh, I, I encourage people to get out there and vote. Okay. My website is CallahanForOregon.com. Okay. Thanks very much, Mark. Thank you, Bruce. Good luck. Appreciate Keep it. Keep knocking on those doors, okay? Yep, thank you. All right, folks, we're going to take it real quick. We're going to do some musical chairs here now. Let's get the other group in here real quick, like, okay? All right. Okay. Thank okay, you. Bruce, you bet. Good job. Good thank job. Good job. Good job. Yeah, okay. Give me my other. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Hey folks, we're back, and we're, we're moving pretty fast here because we've got about three different segments. We have two other segments that we're going to deal with. Now we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about, again, the, the national campaign again. That's, I think it's a good deal and how that relates to Oregon and the way we're going to do that. we got the two Scots here, Scott brothers. Is that fair? That's right. You've seen these guys before. That's what I'm trying to I'm wrong. trying to make it small talk, but the bottom line, i got two guys here, uh, one of which uh, actually works in the legislature. He's, uh, he's with Senator Whitstaff? Whitsitt. Whitsitt. Senator Whitsitt. Who's and retiring in a matter of weeks. Is that, you're going to take over? <laughs> if someone wants to make me an offer I can't refuse, now would be a great time to do See that. See that? That's, that's right. That's the millennium piece. That's the millennium piece. He's in that Played millennium well. category. Right <laughs> off Spoken well. And then, then we got someone representing the, the Johnson will. You, know, you, you remember Gary, Gary Johnson, who's running for president under the Libertarian Party aspect of it. So he's basically representing, to a certain degree, he's representing the Green Party, too. Because at one point in time, we were trying to get those two individuals in the debates. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't debates. say that I represent the Green Party, but I would say that I represent the opportunity for m different parties to have an equal access to the table okay, of right, debate. Right. Well, I'm glad you defined that, Scott. You, you, you did well on that piece. <laughs> no, I th but, believe that the Green Party has a right to be at the debates, to be involved in That's, the process just as we should, and that, that was to deny the, point. That was the, point. the, mi yeah. the minor parties' yes. access to the discussion. I think that and is we the, made that same fact on the show. We made that correct. show on the, on the show because I thought it would be a very, it would have been a very, it would have been a better campaign, if you will. I so. And I think the major media, which, which the majority of the public do not like, Right? No, point, they do point not. Blank. And, but they're focusing on one thing, two candidates, Correct. the one who brings in the edge. And, of course, when you strip it down past the rhetoric, you realize there's really little difference to today's Democratic Party, today's Republican Party. Once you get past the surface of rhetoric, it's still big government. It's still trillions of dollars of national debt. It's still bombs in the Middle East. There is literally so such... It's you can't tell the difference between the two parties anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, at the, at the same time, let's just be upfront about the whole piece. I mean, they're focusing, the major media are focusing on those two candidates, the Republican yes. Party and the Democratic Party, and one of those individuals are going to be elected. 
You know, I would actually, I will put in the caveat, no, it's not over till it's over. Okay. Um, My experience right now, of course, this is anecdotal, but with um, phone banking, we are finding that, um, I am personally finding from Connecticut to Alaska to Oregon, that the um, 70 plus, 75 and older crowd, the heartland is starting Mm -hmm. to discover us. They're so nauseated with the Clinton, Trump, just the mudslinging, the dirt. And they, I have had numerous, numerous conversations with um, senior citizens who are starting to break our way. Now, obviously, we have got a long way to go. I still think that the focus and the mission has always been to break the, um, pr- prevent the electoral victory, the 270 going to Trump or the 270 electoral votes going to Clinton. We see that it's still a very, very doable. So, and of course, you don't know until you wake up on Wednesday morning what those numbers are. And when someone pulls the closet of their, the curtain of their voting booth, I cannot imagine, I personally cannot imagine looking at my, my voter ballot and saying, I don't like Trump, I don't like Clinton, but I'm going to vote for one of them. I, th- I would hope that the American conscience would say, I will vote for someone I want. Okay. But now you do understand the major media, the way they're looking Oh, I know the way they're spinning, but they have a vested yeah, yeah. interest. They're but vested the in the party The number is 270, and they're basically educating the majority of the people right now it's about right. the 270 and the fight is between those two individuals that is correct and in fact they may even made a point about the fact that the liberty i'm just throwing this out to you and maybe you can share some thoughts about that uh, that the promotion that they're sending out is relates to the Libertarian party you just need five percent so you can make sure that you're in the next election with some bucks that's the well that's it the serves definition. their narrative it serves the two-party narrative very well i don't think it serves the american people very well and i either we are going to wake up on wednesday morning with one of the biggest political upsets of U.S. history, um, or we will certainly see the Libertarian Party established as a major party. And, of course, I'm not going to say that that's not a win, but I I refuse to discount an out-and-out victory come Wednesday morning. And, again, I'm basing that only on the fact that I personally cannot look at names that I have no affinity for, no love for, no respect for. I cannot personally see somebody voting for someone they don't like, don't want. That's the option. Right. Scott, why don't you come on in here in regards to talking to that whole piece. What do you think? How, how does that impact Oregon? Well, I think the 5% figure is interesting because that moves forward in the future. I think getting on the ballot in all 50 states is an accomplishment in and of itself within the two-party yeah. system so. and structure. So I think the extent to which it can move it forward and have more to work with next cycle, I think there's definitely an appetite right now among the public for more options and choices. I think that, you know, just speaking as an individual, the public would have been much better served having more than the two major candidates in the debates, and we missed a real opportunity. Did you see the to, PBS you know, debates yeah. with Jill Stein and, and Gary Johnson? That, that, That's what yeah. a debate could have looked like. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But that didn't happen, unfortunately. But, they are, they, but I will say one thing. They are carrying Gary's photo, you know, as far as the, and the Green Party also, too. As far as the numbers, you know, as far as the um, the percentage of of the popular vote, mm-hmm. the popular vote, they they they've not uh, they've not retained any of the the electoral. Scott's votes absolutely yet. right. It'll mm-hmm. change it, the the Libertarian Party gaining major party status will change the nature of American politics okay. moving forward. Scott, what do you think about? And I know you've been out there and let's talk about the presidential race. How do you what, what do you what's your feel about uh, to date in terms of uh, is it being is it, is it is it communicating to the to the majority of the population as to what the issues are? You know, I can pull up my Facebook news feed right now, and I can pull up X number of articles saying Clinton's going to run away with it, and the same number of articles <laughs> yes. from people saying that Trump's going to run away with it. And it's it, it's a wild card. It's been a wild card every step of the way. Um, you have Richard Burke on from time to time. He's a friend. Right. You know, he's from Minnesota. He said he saw the same thing when Jesse Ventura was elected governor there, yeah. that all the polling up until then showed major party candidates mm-hmm. way up here and then Jesse Ventura getting a fraction of the vote. All the polling is done based on likely voters. So what about unlikely voters? Mm-hmm. Especially now that Oregon has motor voter, right? Automatic voter registration. Mm-hmm. You have a whole crop of new voters who have you know, presumably never engaged in the process. Before. My wife has never voted in her entire life, and she is voting Gary Johnson. I mean, that's the significance of what that means. Yeah, and I have friends who are traditionally vote Republican who are voting for Gary Johnson. I have friends who traditionally vote Democrat who are right. voting for Gary right. Johnson. Right. Right. And 
Um, I can say that none of them have reported having to hold their noses while yeah. casting their votes. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean by getting in the voter closet. Uh, but but I see all record. kinds of posts from people saying, I just yeah. cast my ballot and boy, do I right. feel dirty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, one of the things I'm going to throw out on the table for both of you guys is that do you think the issues were really really discuss from the major issue from the from the as far as the major media is concerned and the two major candidates that are focused because the other two guys the other two people are not not in, in the debates or not being no, no because his issues and my issues and a lot of gary johnson issues uh have to do with personal liberty i i don't hear you know the only time i hear hillary clinton discussing personal liberty is after there's a shooting somewhere, she says, you have too many rights. Mm -hmm. So that to me means that, <laughs> you know, my rights mean less to her than her power. Mm -hmm. And that troubles me. Mm -hmm. Trump um, is not talking. Clinton is I not talking. Trump talking about rights either. No, and they're neither one are talking about dealing with entitlements. I have three millennial. I have three. Ch I have I have three children who are older, who are all of voting age. And I have two little children who are not of voting age. And so nobody apart from Johnson Weld has been discussing where what is going to happen 40 years down the road road when we have not dealt with the, the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. which is the trillion, the trillions of dollars of debt that our nation is in, and then the entitlements and our military spending and our military campaigns. Nobody, I'm a veteran, you're a veteran, nobody is addressing this mm -hmm. outside of Gary Johnson and Bill Weld. Mm -hmm. And you look at the amount of time in this presidential election that has gone towards discussing personalities. Yes. Right? We've spent so much time talking about Hillary Clinton's emails. We've spent so much time talking about things that Donald Trump said 10 years ago. That mm -hmm. in the meantime, the yep. constitutionally guaranteed rights of the average person are not being discussed or addressed mm -hmm. whatsoever. No. What about, now here, here's the, we, we started out this whole piece, as far as I'm concerned, it was, it was the women, it was the woman's term, if you will to sit in the presidential seat, okay? Where are we today on that piece and why? Why are we not? Well, if that was truly the case, if that was truly the issue, then Jill Stein would have been given as equal treatment as Hillary Clinton. Okay. So it's not about simply the feminine aspect of the, the candidate. It's really about the issues. Mm -hmm. And nobody is talking about the issues. Mm -hmm. Well, and <clears throat> there's a lot of women who wouldn't vote for Hillary Clinton. And That's it's true. not because they don't want a woman president, because they don't want that woman to be president. president. Even my wife. My wife is apolitical. Right? doesn't usually pay attention to these things, doesn't care at all. She says, I lost a lot of respect for Hillary Clinton in the 1990s on the basis of the fact that she stayed with somebody who had cheated on her and embarrassed her. And feminism is this whole notion that you got there on your own, right? Hillary Clinton cannot legitimately say that she got there on her own. Um, and the argument can be made that she got there riding the coattails of a man that she should have left decades ago. <laughs> So, so getting yeah. So back to your point is, was this supposed to be the year the woman? Is this going to be the year of the woman? I should hope that we would say that this is the year for America, um, and I do not believe I, that. <laughs> I don't believe that Clinton represents the best of America, uh, best of American womanhood, and, and I don't really want to talk about the gender of it. I just want to talk about the fact: what do we need as a nation? There's nobody, we're not talking about the issues that are important. Education, for every time we're talking about Donald Trump, what he said, let's just take immigration reform. I haven't heard Clinton put forward coherent conversation and in-depth discussion about immigrant reform, immigration reform. Uh, Donald Trump's solution is absolutely bonkers. And so where is the dialogue about the 11 million undocumented workers who are living in this country who are, but for their being here, they're not criminal. They're not doing things that are illegal outside of the fact that we can say, yes, they're, they are in our country illegally, but they're really undocumented workers. They're not just like someone can smoke pot in a state where you're not allowed to smoke pot. Well, yes, smoking pot is criminal, but are they behaving in a criminal fashion? No, they're not going into a car, smashing the window down and stealing what's inside to go buy their next fix or whatever you want to say. Yes, smoking pot in a state where it's illegal to do so might be illegal, but they're not behaving in a criminal fashion, okay. with the exception of that entry, that okay. one point. Now, that, that you made that point about the undocumented workers. That is a major, major issue. It is a and huge everybody issue. just keeps throwing it under the carpet, if you will. Mm -hmm. And you've got, and, and with Gary, I mean, you know, he, being former governor of New Mexico. Correct. Right next to Mexico, because right. in all due respect, that's really where the major issue is all about. Because in all due respect, many of those families came here after the first round, if you will, of citizenship, yeah. and then they came afterwards, 
mm -hmm. and then waiting for a second round. A lot of them didn't get, if you will, the citizenship. So a lot of those folks then added the other. Because everybody keeps so, kicking the can down the right. road. So where's Gary on this? And what's what's his solution to the problem? Governor Issue. Johnson's solution is that you allow people to have a, a legal entry point into the nation, that they have a background check, that you be issued a social security card, that you pay your taxes. So um, he's it's a very common sense approach, a very pragmatic. L literally, what we need is pragmatism right now in our nation. We need principled pragmatism. Governor Johnson represents that. He understands that he's not going to get everything he wants, but there are specific things that we definitely need. But the present policy right now, you're saying that He's got you have it's yeah. bottleneck. You're talking about visas. You're talking about you're talking about quotas. And as soon as you start doing that, you create. A, it's like the DMV. Let's look at what have you create a line around the corner just to get service. And you're taking a number and you're waiting there in your chair for forever. Well, while someone Joe is sitting here doing this, sitting in his chair forever, ten other people are saying, "I I can't wait. I have to feed my family." And, and that's exactly it. And. If under the current system, it takes people literally years to legitimately, mm -hmm. legally mm -hmm. earn citizenship, people make that calculated decision every Correct. day, right? And they decide that they would rather risk dying in the desert right. for a shot at, at living in America than spending years to get citizenship <laughs> waiting to... So and, and that it, part of the process needs to be fixed. There's also the trade agreements. Right. And Trump, I think, missed a golden opportunity to define it in those terms really early on. And say, hey, look, remember that free trade agreement that her husband signed into law 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. How's that working out for you? Mm -hmm. And he could have done it in a way that didn't sound like in he was anti-Mexican. Because right. the fact of the matter is, if you've got people from that country crossing over here, risking dying in the desert, clearly that agreement isn't working for them. And right. what it, who it does work for, though, is the sex trafficker, the drug smuggler, because now I can come across the border. There'll be 100 people who are good, hardworking people who have no malintent towards our nation. And so I can, in that group, I can put a sex trafficker, I can put drugs, and I can smuggle in that group these items. Now, if I give the good people an avenue into our country where you get a background check, you get a social security card, now they're all coming in through the gate beautiful, through the good gate. That means anybody else who's coming across at night or sneaking across the border through a tunnel, they're not masked or covered or camouflaged mm -hmm. with good people. And boom, you know that person is coming into our nation with bad intent. Well, let's talk about <clears throat> let's talk about that point in regards to where Trump is on this issue. Because when you start thinking about it, one of the things that he has been, one of his supporters, if you will, of folks who are saying they've been, they've gotten unemployed as a as relate to the, un, the undocumented, the, the undocumented workers. So a lot of people are really upset. I would challenge that. A lot of people are that. really upset about because, the fact that that's happening. Here's what I will how do we, say. How do, we, how do we address I, that issue? Drive down the Columbia River Gorge, and you see through the Dalles, through Hood River, you see all along the gorge, you see these beautiful vineyards, all right? You know what? The people working in those vineyards are not your Anglo-Americans. They're not white Americans doing it. The, the, the number one demographic that is working our orchards and our fields are hardworking, God-fearing, good people, and they're usually of Latino or Hispanic background, Mexican background. And so... I don't but see many it. of those are Americans now who, right. who Some said of, they've yeah, lost their well, job. The migrant worker you often you that depend, he relates to. So it depends on whether or not you're dealing with a migrant workforce that's coming up from Mexico and then working, or whether or not it's um, American citizens that are working. But the point being is that the people who are working these jobs, they're not taking the jobs from white America or from Americans, be them Latino Americans, be them Black Americans. These are people who, because of educational deficits or because of the, their work, gener wealth is generational. If my grandfather father worked his backside off I the grandchild benefit from that and that these are this is the sweat equity of our immigrants building for their children for their future generations for our nation a sweat equity that will come home down the line and you will see wealth unparalleled because of their hard work okay but I'm just saying that Trump's position is that he tends to identify with those folks who are saying I've lost my job as a result of the some of that's been workers. replaced because of automation, because of changes in the automobile industry. But then again, what are the jobs that have been replaced? Now we see high wage, high tech, high education. So it's a difference. So now it's a seventy-five dollar an hour job that's been created, as opposed to a ten dollar or fifteen dollar an hour job. And that's the, that was the trade off with NAFTA. I'm not here to discuss or debate NAFTA, mm -hmm. but one of the things that we see in these these policies and these trade agreements is that we see that the wealth and the earning potential 
potential is changed from a lower to moderate income level to a higher upper scale income level. And that's where you see pr prosperity for the nation. I want to get a, I want my child to get a job at $75 to $100 an hour in a high tech. Look what Elon Musk is doing with now with his solar panels. Okay, we could go on and on. I you know, know what you, I'm saying? You know, I hear you. But like I said, we got to make sure we, we understand where, where the bulk of his support is. People are angry across the... Anybody, I, I, think, I think people are just mad at the establishment, which right. is what we saw happen in, in Britain. In mm -hmm. fact, I was talking to a friend of mine who was educated over there and said, well, what are some of the differences, right? And he said one of the things they do over there is that they tied immigration to other policies. For example, most of their nurses over there are foreign-born. We have a similar crisis going on here with, you know, workforce development in Industry particular industries. And you could probably put together a, a good comprehensive system. But, you know, part of it's been these free trade agreements that are largely big government and big business interests getting together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can be revisited. They're not set in stone. Right. And I think that's essentially when Bernie Sanders came across that same question, that was the approach he took when talking about it was, well, we need to revisit some of these trade agreements. But he used rhetoric that stimulated a positive, constructive conversation. When Trump speaks, there is no positive, constructive conversation. You, When you start at the bottom with these people are rapists and these people are drugged, blah, blah, I mean, just bashing a whole group but, of people. But, but, but so now point, you can't have that all, conversation. All I'm saying is it's resonating with the population. It's resonating yeah, with because people. Because all due respect, the ones who were pretty well established politicians aren't there today. And, and the results you're seeing are the, the numbers. People we're talking are, about it's a, beyond just even that. Well, People I think are it's, frustrated. They're frustrated because they don't have any jobs, right? Frustrated part of because, it is, as you know, the, 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 both the media and Congress mm -hmm. were low rated big time. Right. Very much so. Most of them are getting reelected, though, just because yeah, of the way the districts are. And that, yeah, those, that I love seeing those where down. people say, oh, you know, Congress's approval rating is 4%. He says, <laughs> right, but everyone hates Congress, but they like their own congressman right. and vote him in again and right. again and again right. because he brings home the bacon to the and district. So I understand right. that people so are angry. I think the focus needs to be off of what that person has or versus what that person doesn't have. What I love Johnson's message is how can we quick. create the, stimulate the entrepreneurial spirit of okay. America? Okay. Well, bottom line, folks, that's where I said. So who's going to get elected? I'm going to say Gary Johnson by the biggest president, political for president. Upset. Okay, who's going to get elected? Oh God! <laughs> it's going to be Gary who's Johnson. Who's going to get elected? Come on now, guys, give I, it up. I have no idea because if you had asked me at the beginning of the month, things were looking horrible for Trump with yeah. the release of that audio. Well, we got two 10 days years ago. I mean, hey, the things are but happening. But then you know, okay. the last week has been horrible for Hillary right. Clinton. Right. I have not lost got, faith in the American. You're public. still holding yours. You haven't voted yet. Oh, no. the, uh, uh, the yeah. other people in my house who can vote haven't voted yet. Yeah, okay. I turned my ballot in. Okay, right okay. I've already yeah, voted. Okay, okay, all right, there you go. <laughs> Thank all you, right. Bruce okay, Bissard. Thanks very much. Thank this you for good. your service, Really sir. good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Always good. Let's keep it going. Okay, good. All right, folks, we're going to take another batch here, and we're going to get another round. It's getting good. It's getting better all the time. And we are going to be back and revisit this whole piece, okay? Yeah, really. All right, good. All right, guys. Let's do it after the election piece. Yes, sir, we will do that for sure, okay? okay? Are we allowed to get up yes, now? Yes, you can. You can, go on. you can get up. Just go out. Go around this way. Give me the other batch. Where's, where's Teresa? Where's, where's Don? Come on up here. Okay, I got a batch on. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. We're back on again. We got this la the last part of the show here aspect of it, and I really want to. I think this is going to be a good neat piece because we got to spend some time on the women. Yes. I mean, we got to spend some time on the women. We just can't put them under put them under the bus, if you will, or put them under the carpet. I mean, it, it, they're there, and they're, 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 they've got expectation, and a lot of times they're not. A lot of times the issues not being discussed. 
And when you start thinking about abortion, you talk about this, you talk about that, this, that, and the other. And then with some of the some of the things that are out there right now, we just need to spend a little bit more time with women. So guess what? I've got a guest here today that you're going to probably be seeing her quite a bit on Oregon Voter Digest because she's going to be the media correspondent. And she's going to be talking about issues across the board. And she's from this area, so constantly we're going to be spending a lot of time in this area. And then at the same time, I've got, I've got her sidekick at the same time, her husband, Don, who's very much involved with the whole issue of crime and all that police work. And this, that's a big issue yeah. that we have here in the metropolitan area, but all over the country for that matter. So, uh, but I've got, the, I've got Don here with us. But we're going to give to, uh, Teresa here an opportunity to respond. I mean, we, it, it, you know, it, it was. It started out with the, with the, with the issue of women. You got me? And then all of a sudden, at the end of the day, uh, Hillary Clinton got the nod, if you will, to be the representative for all the women. And in many ways, people have said that we're holding our nose, like they're being, saying the same thing with, the, with, with, the, uh, with Donald Trump, but, but the bottom line, they're saying they're holding their nose. Okay, how did we get there? T, you're the answer. Uh, Talk to us. How did they get there? Well, I don't know. I mean, um, I know that a lot of people have issues with Hillary Clinton, um, particularly because they question her level of honesty over the last few years, but um, I think a lot of women have more apprehension about Donald Trump, mm -hmm. um, just because he's he's pretty scary, okay. especially for women, so. But that's that side, I mean, we talk <laughs> about women. Don, what do you think? Is that the lesser of two evils? Uh, Clinton, a we lot of people We're talking about think... the lesser of two evils? All right. <laughs> Are the women afraid of Trump, so they're gonna vote for Hillary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's because, all you have to do. <laughs> because she's the first woman? Um, I Is don't that know. Correct? Should that should it be that way or no? Should I, I don't know. I mean, uh, I can't remember a time when there were two worse candidates running for president. But I have to say for myself, if if asked what I think, um, Donald Trump is pretty terrifying and um, he makes me far more uneasy than Hillary Clinton. <laughs> okay. But then at the same time, I'm gonna throw this out for our discussion aspect of it. Now he was the nominee for the Republican Party. Yes. Mm -hmm. There were some 14 people who were established politicians in this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I mean, representing the people in their various areas, whether it be Senator, Congress, or this, that, and the other. And they were all beaten out by him. Yeah. And, and, and the way mm -hmm. he, they were beaten out by him is that the majority of the people selected him. Right. The majority of the people selected him because they're frustrated. Yeah. And no one's talking to the issues. And he hit, mm -hmm. he hit on some of the points. One of the points, was the undocumented worker piece. Yeah. Yeah. He hit on that, and it is a major issue. You got people walk, I've talked to people on the street and whatever, and, and you know, say, Bruce, I, I, I'll tell you, yes, I'm gonna be voting for him, but I'm not gonna say it publicly. Yeah. I'm gonna say what it was politically correct, because I gotta go to work in the, in the morning, and I got, I got friends, I got this, and it's, it's disrupting my whole family. Mm -hmm. So the whole nine yard is it, I'm just gonna say, mm -hmm. hey, uh, everybody has the right to vote. <laughs> And I'm a, I'm a vote like anybody else, and, and it's my right, if mm -hmm. you will. And I can do this. We we we're, we happen to be a state that you vote by mail. Yeah. And we can just you can do whatever you want to. But it's an issue, and that's, that's why he's sitting there. Yeah. And in fact, then we, when you start thinking about the the, the machine, if you will, it falls in the in the Clinton side. They pretty well know how to run an election, so to speak. Yeah. And when you hear things like, uh, when you hear things like, uh, well like this FBI thing aspect of it. Well, gee whiz, the FBI should not get involved in anything six months before the election. That's ridiculous. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, if, if something is being done wrong, and that's, and that's the thing that's, that, that, that's a major concern with mm -hmm. the people across the board. What do you mean, don't say anything mm -hmm. if someone lied and cheated? Yeah. They just want to know what the truth is. And if the truth is they didn't lie, then say it right up front. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's what the majority of the people say. And I'm saying a lot of people who are saying they're going to vote uh, either one way or vote for Hillary for that aspect of it are basically saying there are two things. One about the fact she was part of the group, if you will, because the majority of the people didn't like Congress. Mm -hmm. She was part of that whole scenario. Yeah. And the same thing with the major media. You got two major media, CNN and Fox. Mm -hmm. CNN just, I mean, right up front, focused straight on down the line with the Clinton piece. Yeah. Fox tries to do a little bit of it because you got Michael O'Reilly, you got O'Reilly who does a little bit of, kind of a little balance, but at least he does, does go just one side. Mm -hmm. Hannity goes one side, he just votes, hey, he's with the Trump situation. Mm -hmm. But those are the big guns on both sides of the deal. So the people are very upset, very upset, and that's why we're doing the show. And, and like I said, you've you, uh, you got your right to, to vote, you got your one vote, you vote to whoever you want to. And then you, at the end of the day, you've got to make that decision. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But at the same time, at the same time, you got to remember now, it's about the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. It's about the 270. You need that if you want the Electoral College vote. Now, in order to get that 270, you have to get the majority of the, uh, of the vote within your, resp your respective states. That's what the fight is all about mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. You know, do you respect that most people say, well, gee whiz, uh, I mean, they bought the, in, in the primary, the establishment bought, <laughs> on the Clinton side, bought the Electoral College. They yeah. basically went down and said, hey, I'm a Democrat, and this is as it is. I mean, you, could, you didn't have no choice in the matter. But now in the general election, that's a different ballgame. Mm -hmm. Trump, huh? Trump beat out all these other politicians right? because he didn't stay on script. Okay. Trump... Trump's appeal, in my opinion, is he says things that a lot of people thinking the lay people. about. That's the right. lay That's people right. are thinking about, but don't want to say. That's right. So he says things about the Mexicans that some people feel. He says some things. He says things about the Muslims yeah. that people feel, and so that's his appeal. Mm -hmm. Is he says I'm going to take care of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. The guy never even. He never was, was never even a mayor. How does yeah. he think he can be the mm -hmm. president of the United yeah. States? Yeah. But that's his appeal. Is he appeals to this base interest of people who, who, don't want to say bad things about Mexicans or, or Muslims? He comes out and says mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Hillary has been around so long that she's, she's as far as a lot of people are concerned, the lesser of two evils because people are afraid that Trump is going to push the red button. And uh, and him and Putin are going to be friends, right? You know, <laughs> him and Putin are going to be friends, and they're going to run the world. Uh, it's the new yeah. world order that that the Bushes never thought about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so uh, Hillary is seen as as the lesser of two evils, and the, uh, then the other fact is that she she's is a woman. A, she's a woman. She's a woman. She's a woman. And she got and the she, women. And she, she got the women at the point that they don't know what to do. And I, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm not, I'm somebody. I want to be somebody. We just we just got through uh, with, with, with President Obama, the the first the African American yeah. elected. He got mm -hmm. eight years. And what about us? Yeah. And then the, probably the next one, or the, the next round after that is, uh, you know, the Hispanic community going to say, what about us? What about us? I mean, yeah. right down there. And then the Chinese can say, what about us? Asian community, what about us? I mean, when are we going to get to the point where we can assimilate uh, the, 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 all of these this melting pot that we have mm -hmm. and say we're just American and we get the best leader out of the whole group? Yeah. Never gonna happen. Isn't that gonna happen? <laughs> Never gonna happen. There's too much money in politics. Too much money in the I think another thing that's important money. is that Trump's success in terms of being a candidate for the Republican Party, it, it's also connected to the power of image because he's completely unsuited for a career in politics. He was a businessman. He doesn't have any sense of um, impulse control. He doesn't. He doesn't have a filter, and you have to have a filter. Mm -hmm. You have to be smooth. You have to be, uh, you know, conciliatory in a way if you're going to be a politician. He just doesn't understand that. But we've been trained that way. Mm -hmm. but the that's only the secret you can of his success. Yeah, that's it. That's well, that, that, the secret of his success. Exactly, he's, exactly. he's going off script. That's right. That's he's right. Not, right. That's he's right. not being that. That's he's right. Right. Yeah. The hell with the filter. But that's he right. has so many <laughs> dirty. He has so many dirty secrets, and he has so many, so many weaknesses um, that are coming out. It's tell, like, tell me who doesn't. There's enough well, dirty secrets to go around. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I mean, I mean, but I think he has more than most, though. Yeah, but but again, too, like I said, if he wasn't selection and we had the other person that was mm -hmm. selected, yeah. would it have been a different race? I don't know. If Cruz had been elected, because if, if Cruz was the representative, then i.e. the undocumented worker would have related to Cruz on the Hispanic yeah, side. Right, you got right, me? Yeah. And then, in all due respect, Hillary would have used that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he would, yeah. She wouldn't be she wouldn't be garnering the support of the uh, of the Hispanics, yeah. if you will. Yeah. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the Asian, the same thing with the Asian piece. Yeah. So, yeah. so the fact of it, what about the issues? Because the issues, as far as I'm concerned, was not discussed enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they yeah. were not discussed. I would agree. We need jobs here. We need yeah. people need work. You, you, it's like it just even even like the wages. They're raising wages. Look, all all the person saying, just give me enough to raise my family. Yeah. Put a roof over my head and food. I'm well, not talking about caviar, this, yeah. that, and the other. I'm just saying, at one point in time, this country was at point. If you made five bucks an hour, you could you could have fed your family. Yeah. Uh -huh. And still be at home. I'm not talking about a luxury home, but yeah. my point is that you had a house and you know, mm -hmm. and you were able to eat. Now today, 
you know, it's a, it's a whole different ballgame. Well, I, I do remember from the first and second debate with Trump and Clinton, uh, Clinton pointed out that his uh, budget would um, benefit the, you know, there would be tax breaks for multimillionaires and it would just be more of the same and that actually it wouldn't create more jobs. And I, re I do remember that from the debate. And I, I you know, I, I th that's one thing I never forgot. But, but I, I heard the same point, but my point, she never said, well, hey, look here. I'm going to be, if she had said, well, I'm mm -hmm. going to tax myself, I'm going to be taxed mm -hmm. for, for, let's say, 15%, but I'm going to add another 5% because I really have money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've got this yeah. this trade for with, with trade to play kind of routine, which mm -hmm. is, I mean, something that will show that she is part and parcel of the concerns. Mm -hmm. You get at that level here, you don't have to pay for anything. It, it, it's yeah. not an issue. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I um... I'm not going to reveal who I voted for. I did vote, but... Um, well, you're right. That's your, that's your right. That's, that's your but, right. But, um, in, in fact, it's probably pretty obvious who I voted for. But um, one of the concerns a lot of people have is just uh, Donald Trump's character. All the all the, the people that he's swindled out of money, you know, the, the um, people that make hotels, construction workers, all those companies that he didn't pay, um, and he bragged about it. I mean, he just... And everything else, um, this investigation that's happening in December, um, he's got 73 impending lawsuits. I mean, he just, he's kind of a train wreck. He does have appeal, and it's unfortunate that he, he was able to kind of uh, push out those really good Republican candidates, because I'm certain that there were better candidates in the Republican Party than uh, Donald Trump. Not, not trying to put them down. I, I, was going to, yeah. I don't know if they were better or not. It's yeah. just... He's about as bad as it gets. You, you go back to, you used to be able to, to support your family on a job. Right. And, the, and the automobile industry was yeah. a part of that. Yeah. If you work for Detroit, General Motors, oh, yeah. you got a career, you could take care of your family. Yeah. And now the, the the saying is that the Mexicans took all the jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not true. Right. Yeah. Who took all the jobs was the robots. Yeah, exactly. Most of these cars now are built by robots. Right. And mm -hmm. so if you want to go after somebody, you need to go after the robots. <laughs> that are built in Japan. That are yes. built in Japan. That's right. <laughs> They're not built in the U.S. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got, the interest here should be in this country. Mm -hmm. But we got a lot of unemployed people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it meant that right now it's getting to the point now if they, if they approve this so-called trades bill, if you will, out, yeah. middle class will be gone. You know, I'll be rich and poor. That's it. It's already gone, Bruce. Yeah, I know. I know it is. It's I'm just trying. Gone. I'm trying to be modest about the deal. <laughs> you know, the other thing that was a really a big thing that was on this whole deal about the women mm -hmm. aspect of it was was this tape that that uh, that came out. I with heard the Trump it. Deal. I heard well, it. You heard the mm -hmm. tape aspect of it. Now, mm -hmm. the definition of that tape was that one. There's no one out there that says that's what he actually did. What, what, I mean, I, I didn't. I, I haven't heard that yet. Well, there have been women who have come out, I think seven or eight, who have come out and said that he accosted them and that he groped them. So. Okay. But I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, read, of, I read about that. I, I know a lot of males that have, well, said they groped, but they didn't grope. I mean, mm -hmm, what's, mm -hmm. what's that what's that's all about? Mm -hmm. See, because when you think about, when I think about, when I think about my dear, my buddy, dear Bill Clinton. That's Bill you know, Clinton's so, job. That, that's what did. <laughs> the original yeah, groper. He, the groper, the original yeah. groper aspect yeah. of it. I'm still reminded when he had that big trial, you know, about the, about, 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 about having sex with this, uh, with Monica. Right, you know, right. The intern aspect <laughs> of it. And then I remember the other thing that came out of that trial was about Arafat. Mm -hmm. You know, the president of Palestine aspect of it, where he basically took this cigar and, and went to her, excuse the French, I mean, everybody's using the word uh, vagina, and put it in her vagina, and then brought it back to the cabin and gave it to him when he met with, 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 uh, with, with Arafat and let him smoke it right there. I mean, sure, it's insulting. I don't like that. I don't even like the idea that, that this issue is that coming really out this way. That really happened? That really happened. Oh Google, it. Google it. Google yeah, it. But see, it's, it's really a sad note that we have to talk about this that way. But, you mm -hmm. know, we're getting to be a society, that's what we're talking. Just like the word nigger. You know, we got caught up in that deal. Well, we're not going to do that. We got The black community was very upset about this deal, and the white community was upset about this deal. Well, the solution is that we're not going to use the word. But I, did, I didn't see a mass, a mass uh, printing of the dictionaries and taking the word out. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see the, the laws, if you will, coming out. Say if, you, if you get caught uh, using the word nigger on somebody and, and they take, you out, take a picture of you on the camera with the audio, we're going to put you in jail or you're going to get fined. Did you see any of that? No, I didn't see no, any of that. No, people are still using the word. I mean, yeah. and the millennium young people are using it big time, if mm -hmm. you will. It's part of our culture. So, so excuse me, right. I mean, it, it was insulting to, to hear the people in the newscaster, the big newscaster, where some women were using the word, excuse the French, pussy. Yeah. That's insulting. 
and that's insulting to the. Well, what about the family? I mean, what about hap what happens to the family aspect of it? And they've seen this kind of stuff. Now we're seeing this in an election. Right. That's the yeah. thing that bothered me about this yeah. whole deal. You got it's me? It's been pretty down and dirty. It's down and dirty. Yeah. But using something ten and a half years, mm -hmm. if you got something, sue the person. You know, you know, you can go to the law school and get a, a new intern and say, hey, look, I got something on this guy. I got some pictures or like, like Monica to a certain degree. I had this, that, and the other. You take it to court and you win the lawsuit. Boom. Mm -hmm. Like Fox. Remember the young lady that, that basically left Fox? And, and basically said they, they sued they sued Fox and she right. got about what? I remember that she got about eighteen or twenty million bucks right or maybe yeah. I think it was a hundred million something something like that but anyway yeah. but my point is that that's not what the people wanted to hear today the only person they they heard what they wanted to hear about was Trump yeah. talking about those issues that no one wants to talk about yeah the the sad thing to me is if you really think about his ideas Trump has a lot of good ideas yeah but they're so radical and his approach to solving those problems are also too radical it's you know yeah, but, but it's okay but that's the media's job to talk about the issue yeah, yeah. i mean he wouldn't he wouldn't have to gotten in that corner yeah. if, if anything they could have vetted him beforehand mm -hmm. they could have vetted him before he even get on the so-called debates or whatever mm -hmm. okay fine we don't want this kind of a person in there just don't answer the question don't even get yeah. use a program to make sure he doesn't get there mm -hmm. they didn't do that yeah. They didn't do that because at the end of the day, it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Show me the money. It's all about the big ads. Who's, who's getting the big ads for CNN? Mm -hmm. Clinton. Who's getting the ads for Fox? Some of it. Mm -hmm. But Don has basically got his ads on the front end when they were doing the apprenticeship program mm -hmm. aspect of it. They already, uh, the people know him. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So, so the thing is, is that uh, this, is, this is a frustrating campaign. This is a frustrating fr time in our there. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's almost like a cat falling off a a, a five-story roof, they're going to fall on their feet. I hope so. <laughs> and we're going to have to deal with it. I would say, though, that uh, I think we're going to, we, we, I think that the, the so-called presidential debate is going to be after the next four years. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. both entities, because we, we're divided 50-50 <coughs> right now, mm -hmm. I think whoever wins the, the presidency, and I don't want to be the president, even if they volunteered <laughs> me, they'd be doing something else on me. Or <laughs> oh, Don, I, we've all, we already tried to do that here, right, Don? <laughs> to give them a deal, but they didn't want to do that piece. <laughs> but the bottom line, the bottom line is that there, there won't be a president uh, the next four years. Uh, there'll be a kind of a, you know, they'll, they'll be basically beaten up on that. If the Democrats win it, then the, the Republicans are going to do it because not, it was about the Supreme Court thing yeah. to begin with. Yeah. You got me? And they're not going to allow, the, if you will, the Supreme Court to be uh, I mean, heavily, I mean, for the next, what, three or four elections, that uh, it's going to be just a liberal kind of a court. It ain't yeah. going to happen. I don't see that happening. I mean, I, uh, that's what I'm saying. So that last four, so that after that next four years, whoever's going to be in the seat, then I think we're going to have an election, mm -hmm. and then some of the other people are going to come up to the table. Mm -hmm. Women are going to say, "Well, I look, hope here, we have a better selection." They're going to say, "Well, <laughs> I think women are going to stand to play. You guys mm -hmm. got to get to the plate. Mm -hmm. You got to select the, the whoever you want mm -hmm. to be there, and vice versa on the other side." Yeah. Is that fair? I think I think the elections. You talk about the money. I think it's less about money because the job don't pay that much. The president only gets four hundred thousand a year. That's peanuts. Yeah, but, but so the Congress will get a million bucks a hit. If you're looking for it, then you're looking for power. Yeah. The money comes from somewhere else. It doesn't come from the job. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not about I'm going to get four hundred thousand dollars if I get elected. It's I get all that power. He gets his afterwards, just like Bill. See, yeah. when he put that nonprofit piece yeah. together, that's where he got his money. Yeah. Is that right? That's why he, that's why he got got his money. So look like look like we're at the end of the deal. We got about ten seconds left. We got a lot more to talk about. Yeah. But hey, folks, make sure you get out and vote. Get those deal. Vote, vote, vote. Whoever you vote for, vote. But think about what what we've been talking about. Do the same thing, whatever. Hey, have a good one. I'll see you next time around. See you next week. We'll talk about what happened. <laughs>